or I might. Oh, oh. Scissors, scissors. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Brian, we are live. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. This is Carrie Sparks with Pioneer Title, your Arizona title gal. I can be reached at 602-715-5704. Um, probably always representing Pioneer Title across the state. Um, super happy to have Brian here this afternoon. It's getting toward the end of the month, believe it or not, kind of in how we are getting ready for um, you know, closings for the resale transactions and business has been very busy. So um, Brian, we kind of pushed back our spot that we usually do in the morning. And um, I wanted to say uh, hello to everyone. Thank you for your time watching this. Um, every day I kind of start um, this show <laughs> um, with kind of something to motivate you. And I've been really working with the whole concept of your value is um, attached to the, the magnitude of the size of the problems that you solve. And it's, it, our segment today on Ask the Underwriter really goes very much hand in hand with solving problems. Um, on the marketing and sales side, if you do not have a current relationship with someone at Pioneer Title, I would love to be the person that you turn to. I've got phenomenal teams that I'm proud to represent. So please, please, please give me a call. Give me an opportunity to show you what we are made of and how committed we are to our customers and how we are committed to our community. But Brian, can you um, give me your license information? Because today we're gonna to talk about credit and I've got a whole bunch of, of notes here. We probably are gonna go a little bit longer than we usually do um, just because of the size of this topic. Um, but if you could give your information and um, all that kind of good stuff just to get started and I'll find my notes. Yes, it's, uh, my name is Brian Reed. I work for Barrett Financial here in Gilbert, Arizona. Uh, my NMLS is 694300. And phone so, number is 602-741-4801. And you'll put your business information down below too. What, what is there, do you have a website that someone could go to to find you as yes. well? It's www.bkreeve.com. -E -E okay, so you, you provided me with a list of different questions that you wanted to make sure we touched on today because this is a really um, complex issue. And um, I remember when, I mean, before we went on, I told you that once upon a time, and it's like almost another lifetime ago, I, I underwrote. I underwrote about 100 pieces of car paper per day. And this is going back now two decades um, when I worked for Bank One um, dealer finance down in Tucson um, and how, you know, how intense it was. But I also mentioned how much I had actually enjoyed looking at someone's credit report to paint a picture of who they were in their history and to really look into all the different parts of it. But one of the questions that you wanted to make sure we touched on today was why do I have variations in my credit score? No one seems to be on the same page. Why don't we have, why do we have three credit scores? So I'm gonna try to encapsulate this and make this as, as small as possible because this is a very, very in-depth um, topic because we could go on hours and hours talking about this. But one of the things is when I first meet with a customer, the number one thing that I ask them is, what is your FICO score? Um, do you have an annoy? And usually they'll tell me, yes, I know what it is. This is what FICO score. But the next thing I ask them is, what's the source of this? And the reason being is because a lot of times in our mind, we think we have three credit scores. We have three FICO scores. We have, you know, our Experian, which was TRW at one point, TransUnion and Equifax. So we think that these are all uniform across the board. What people don't realize is that there's a difference between what we call a Vantage score, uh, a difference from a FICO score, and then there's a different modeling for each individual one. So for instance, you could have essentially 35 different variations of a credit score. So the one popular one that people like to use is Credit Karma. So Credit Karma doesn't use a FICO. Credit Karma uses a competitor scoring model, which is called a Vantage score. A Vantage score, they had a version one, a version two, and those pretty much went from a credit score range of 501 to 990. And a lot of times when those translate into a FICO score, you lose about 20 points. And then you also have 
advantage score model three and four. Manage uh, advantage score three and four, use the 300 to 850 range, but they're still not a FICO score. They're a credit score, but it's advantage credit score. So now we talk about FICO scores. Well, FICO scores, there's almost 23 different variations of FICO scores. So the FICO scores, depending between the, the three bureaus, you have basically the most popular one, which is called a score eight. Score eight is, is the one that's mainly used. But if you went and looked for like an auto loan, an auto loan uses anywhere what we call an isolated FICO score, which is called an auto score. So you have an auto score eight, auto score two, five, and four. Those are the primary ones that are used for auto. And then you have a credit card one too. So even though it's a FICO, it's a different model that does a bank card score eight, bank card score three, bank, of course, bank card score four and five and two. So when the consumer is out shopping, when they're looking at the credit score they got on maybe a recent auto loan, it is it can be significantly different than when you're pulling credit to qualify Correct. for a mortgage product. Correct. So the primary ones that we use for mortgage is Experian, we use the FICO score model two. For Equifax, they use the FICO score model five. For TransUnion, they use the FICO score model four. So each one looks at debt a little bit differently. If you have a credit tracker, let's say, you know, you have like a credit wise or a credit card tracker, most likely these are going to use the FICO scores of the bank card FICO score modeling. So it could be a bank card. So if, if you have like a, a, an Experian credit card tracker, then most likely it's going to be a bank card score eight, a score three or a bank card score two. So these all have different variations and they all translate into each other. So depending on what model you have, whether it's a credit card, whether it's an auto, whether it's the, uh, uh, the, the FICO score eight, these all have different variations. Well, so Brian, I have a question. So there has been there, this is not on your list. I'm sorry. I might be surprising you now, but um, there uh, was, was, chatter that there were going to be some adjustments to how FICO scores were determined. Has that happened? And exactly yes. what kind of effect did that have? So what you're referring to is FICO's had all these different models out there and different models represent different things. Like say for instance, a FICO score eight, when you pay off a collection may not negatively affect your FICO score. However, with other models, if you pay off a collection and it falls into the, in the most recent six months, that will negatively impact your credit. So a lot of times people think that when we don't pay our bills or we have something where we have a collection and we clear it up, we think that if we pay that debt off, that it's going to improve our credit when it does exactly the opposite, depending on what it is you're trying to purchase and what credit score model they use. So FICO has been throwing this around for a while and now they've come out with the new model is called uh, FICO score model nine. So this, for, this FICO score model nine is, it, it applies to auto, it, apply, it applies to bank cards, it applies to the regular FICO score nine that's replacing the FICO eight. And there is some changes that they've made to it to try to get a more universal look at what your FICO score is. So it's more consistent among the lenders and the creditors to basically do this, to, to, to try to get a more accurate depiction of what your credit score is. So I, I gave you a scenario. I had a lead that came in last week um, for a, a gal that got a hold of me, funny as it is, through Facebook. Um, I connected with her and she was throwing around the, her options of whether to purchase or whether to rent. And her credit score came in somewhere. I mean, we don't know why. I mean, this is just, I mean, I don't have all the, obviously, I'm, I sell title insurance. I don't know what was on her credit report. I just know that she had a lower credit score. If she's wanting to truly purchase and she has a lower credit score that might have some collections and you know some, some of those items on there that you're talking about, what does that consumer usually do? Do they Start. I mean, I think the reaction of a lot of people is to try to fix their own credit 
when maybe there's other right. options out there, like calling you or calling your credit repair company? I mean, what are your thoughts on credit repair companies and, and kind of the steps? So credit repair companies, they kind of fall into two different categories. And, and I, I don't want to necessarily say anything negative about credit repair companies, but each credit repair company varies from person to person. You have one credit repair company that basically what they'll do is they'll essentially kind of model your credit and they will tell you exactly what they can get achieved for you and get this done within a certain time frame, six months, seven months. It's, and it's usually a flat fee that you pay per trade line. Or you have another credit repair company that basically what they will do is they will just basically sign you up on a monthly fee. Now, what you have to worry about when you look at the two side by side is if you have someone that's modeling your credit, looking at your credit, and they have, they have identified accounts or derogatories or things that they can do or balances that you need to pay down or possible authorized users or being added on to that, um, those typically are going to have you more of a finite result. If you deal with another one that maybe just basically is charging you a monthly fee, what those ones will tend to do is they will take your derogatories and they will dispute them monthly. And what happens when you dispute a derogatory account, it falls off in the equation of what your FICO score is while it's under dispute. So what it basically does is it takes it out of the calculation until that dispute is resolved, which could take 45 days or 60 days. So it looks like, in short, your credit's getting better when in fact, you, these accounts are just under dispute. So you think that the credit repair may be working for you, but at the end of the day, that will, what will happen is they'll end up reporting when they find out what is, what is happening. The other, the other thing that they will try to do is if you dispute an account long enough and the creditor doesn't provide documentation, then they have to remove it off of your credit. So they're hoping that by redisputing, 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 that the creditor is going to slip up and not provide paperwork back, and then they can get it removed off their credit. So when you pay a monthly fee and you do that, that's more of a, a of of a game of just kind of chasing the creditor, trying to get stuff removed, versus a more solid credit modeling where they're just going to look at it and say, "Look, if you do this, you do that, you do this, you do that, and you provide documentation that these are erroneous or this isn't happening." then they can actually give you a finite result for a flat fee. What about um, credit consolidation loans? As an underwriter, how do you view consolidation loans? So this all falls down to the individual model that we're using, right? So when, when we we're dealing with a credit modeling company or credit repair agency, we want to make sure what they're trying to get our credit to or what we're tracking is the model that we use. So you could have a credit repair company working on something that is basically on your Experian 8 FICO score ranges, and they may be trying to work on that, but each account affects each one of these models differently. So you might be working on your credit to fix a certain loan or a certain debt, when in turn, it may improve that model that they use, but it doesn't affect the model that we would use in mortgages. So that is where sometimes people are led down this road blindly, or they also don't want to pay the money or a monthly fee or the money to, to do credit repairs. So they kind of want to do it on their own and they're going off of things that they hear. Like Experian 8 has things, something that's called an Experian boost, which it will bring up your credit score, your Experian 8 score by self-reporting your utilities. So, what so the does, gal that I was talking to on Facebook then last week, just by reporting her utilities and, and some of the other items that might boost it, she may put herself in a category of being able to purchase a home versus putting herself in another rental for 12 months, right? Well, typically it only gives about 15 points and that is on an Experian 8 score, which we don't use Experian 8 in mortgage, but depending on who she's dealing with, may use Experian 8, which is a widely used uh, modeling, to bring that score up. You also have creditors that don't pull all three bureaus, they only pull one. And each one of the bureaus model different based on the type of accounts that they have. 
So and in addition to that, every creditor is not required to report to every bureau. That's why you have variations in credit scores too. You may have a collection account that's just reporting to Experian, but not reporting to TransUnion or Equifax. So a lot of times when you have derogatory accounts, that's where you see the differences because derogatory accounts, a lot of times, whether it's collections, charge-offs, um, liens and those sorts of things will only report to one bureau. So we still look at all of the information collectively, but when we price out a loan and we look at what we're doing or what we wanna set the customer up against in mortgage is we're gonna use the middle score of the three that they have, but we still analyze all of the bureaus and still look at all of the data that's reported to all the bureaus. So to, to uh, I don't know if I got away from your question there, but- Like uh, the, what are the, what are the, so let's just say, I'll take it that, let's just say that I have uh, on the poor side, and that was one of the things we wanted to talk about is poor, good, and, and you know, the different levels of credit. But let's just say that my credit score was hovering on the good to fair, you know, side of things, you know, down right. in lower 600s. Right. And I wanted my, my ultimate goal was to purchase a home, but that was my credit score today. What, what guidance would you typically give to somebody who was going through that? I mean, that the home dream of home ownership is always there. So how, how would you walk someone typically through the steps? So the honest answer to that is there's no blanket answer. And a credit score is so individually scored, it's unreal of how different it is from person to person. We can hear many things out there where somebody will say, oh, I know how to fix your credit. All you gotta do is get signed up as an authorized user on somebody else's account they've had on time payments. Uh, you know, you wanna basically keep your credit utilization less than 30%. Uh, you know, you want, you don't, you want to keep your new credit down. You want to make sure about your payment history is on time and all of that. So everybody's got kind of their own equation in there, right? I mean, we know about 30% of your credit score is basically the amount of credit utilization. About 10% of your credit score is new credit that you've got. About 15% of your credit score is the length of your credit history. Uh, and then 10% is about the mix of your credit and about 35% of your credit score is your payment history. So the first thing that I do is because you have so many different models and so many different variations, I never try to take a stab at it because what works for you doesn't work for the next consumer. I'll have a consumer that they'll get added on as an authorized user and then all of a sudden their credit goes up 20, 30 points and then I have somebody else that I add as an authorized user and it does absolutely nothing. In fact, it may hurt their credit. So let's, so let's kind of end it today with talking about something that is kind of a hot topic for, for you as a lender, for a realtor, and for any just anyone involved in the purchasing process, let's just say I'm wanting to. I'm back. I'm a, I'm that gal again, and I'm I want to purchase a home. And you've taken a credit application. We've got an accepted contract. We're we've opened escrow with Pioneer Title. We're going through the process. What advice would you give to the to a, um, someone who is purchasing about their credit? Because it comes up far too often. Do you so know where I'm going with this? Right. So the second part to that explanation was, I don't try to take a stab at anybody's credit. The first thing that I do yeah, is but I what about what about if I go shopping for a car, or what if I go and open a new credit card? What happens next? So that's, that's exactly, that ties into what I was just gonna answer on. So what I do, whenever I meet with somebody that may be on the threshold or wants to get over the next level and get better pricing, I model their credit. So the difference between modeling is I'm not just taking a guess or a stab at what you're doing. Basically, I can actually, I have access to go in, model your credit, put in whatever scenario I want, a new car, a new credit card, you pay this credit card down, you get this collection removed, you pay this one, whatever your credit profile has, I can actually go in and alter it manually and it will tell me what your score will be on any given day over the next two years. So that's the difference between modeling and credit repair is I can actually go in and I can say, look, I'm not gonna charge you a lot of money. It only costs me $7 to do. I can actually go in, figure out what it's gonna be and I can give you the answers that you need. 
And then after the phone call or the conversation that we have, I can actually shoot you over what we discuss and actually reflecting what your score will be. Once those items are done, I can go to the bureaus and I can get your credit rescored within 72 hours. And then that way it puts you right where you need to be versus you trying to figure this all out on your own. Yeah, because I don't know that you'd want to be out there all by yourself trying to teach yourself how to fix your credit and then you could end up doing the wrong thing. Brian, right. thank you so much for talking about, I mean, this this is like, like we said at the beginning, this is a big issue. I mean, we could get into judgments, we could get into, you know, all kinds of different scenarios inside of just, just credit. But right. um, I've got some really kind of exciting things coming up. I'm like I said uh, last week. I'm going to relaunch my podcast. I'm going to start doing um, a, a community type of uh, Facebook Live. I've met lots of people that are doing great things for our community, um, and then I'm proud to be uh, involved in uh, shooting a commercial this week for the Starbright Foundation. Um, people who know me know that I'm very involved um, in human trafficking awareness, as, particularly as it relates to children um, through Starbright and abused children. Um, so. I'm excited awesome. to do that. And um, a local realtor here in Gilbert um, has offered to do this um, for Starbright and for me. Um, we're both uh, Chandler 2020 Women of the Year. And so this was a, a gift from the Amy Jones group over at Keller Williams. And uh, I just want to have a shout out to um, that that group. I mean, that's a, it's that's a awesome. very, very generous compassionate, wonderful offer. So I'm excited to do that Thursday. Um, I'm actually taking a day off this week, Brian, <laughs> believe it or not. I think it might be the first one since uh, this whole COVID-19 thing started. So tomorrow I'm actually going to do some different programming and, and move. Um, I usually talk about divorces and, and um, strained relationships on Friday. We're going to do that tomorrow. And um, then next week we'll be back with another great topic for you and um, as always, just I thank all the customers that have been so loyal to, to me to pioneer through this whole thing. And my value is determined by the size of the problems that I solve. And if you are a realtor, a loan officer, a developer, someone involved in a real estate transaction, I would love to find a way to help you solve the problems that you're having right now. Marketing and sales inside of our industry has changed dramatically. Um, I'm hearing that we will yes. more than likely never go back to the way that it was. So for those people out there that think that we're going to go back to um, what we knew, and I knew a lot of years of it, um, they're not saying that it's going to go back. So um, I have worked very hard to do a reinvention, and I'm here to share that with anyone who's interested in learning more about some of the different things with skills. And I'm also going to be able to start teaching CE classes very soon, too. So um, it's awesome. Can't wait. I, it's, you know, it's a big growth time even uh, for me. <laughs> but uh, again, I'm, I'm Carrie Sparks, your Arizona title gal with Pioneer Title. I can be reached at 602-715-5704. I'll put my business card down below. You can find me on different social media platforms. All these YouTube, uh, all these uh, videos are all uploaded onto my YouTube channel. So um, check out all the different sites. Um, I'm having fun on Instagram too. And always, I've been on LinkedIn a long time. So um, if you're on any of those different social media platforms, find me there. And again, Brian, thanks so much. Have a really good awesome. rest of your day. Thank you, Carrie. Have a great day. <laughs> Bye. -bye.